Hey, what's going on everyone? So I just created a quick video while I was at the academy um, because what I did was I uh, ran down to one of the corner shops close to kind of where I am as a music store um, and I couldn't believe they had this drum in stock and for the price that it was. These drums normally go anywhere from four to eight hundred dollars um, depending on if it's um, one of the vintage models or not um, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, this is, I think, from the later 80s. Um, so still vintage in a sense, but not vintage vintage from like 60s, 70s. But it's a um, Tama and handcrafted. And uh, man, I'm just I'm blown away by the snare just because of the price I got it for, the fact that it's birch. So. Now, not just having maple, but it's got this nice uh, polyurethane co coating on the inside. It's got the badge showing that, so the, the model and everything. It's a superstar, all birch shell, handcrafted by Guangzhou Hoshino. So, I, I, I don't know, Guangzhou, Guangho, I, I don't know exactly how to say his first name, but um, Yoshino. So, hand manufactured by him it's got the badge inside I'm trying to show there but showing it's handcrafted um, superstar and then look at the how immaculate the shell is it's like so well made the bearing edges are great they put um, pure tone snares on it uh, hazy 300 and then an ambassador coated ambassador on top so whoever had this drum for like 20 years, they took dang good care of this drum. So um, you can see the lugs, there's no splay, um, the receivers are bulletproof, and it comes with die cast hoops. And in addition to that, it's a 13 by 6, which is a unique dimension. I have a 13 by 7 with my um, pork pie brass patina. And so now what I can do is I can take this and if I want to put a die cast hoop as my batter hoop for the um, brass patina, then I can keep you know the flanged on the bottom, use the die cast on top because we all know how that changes the attack and um, the punch and the sound of your snares, especially on snares. Um, I'm not a huge fan of die cast on toms. I like more singing drums, um, you know, a lot of people just like that deep fundamental of just do, 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 but I like having more singing toms that are boom, 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 because you can always take that away, you can always muffle, you can put rings on, you can do head changes, all that, but a lot of drums that are meant to just be real deep, fat, rock sounding drums, that's, they're kind of a one trick pony. So. Um, you know, different schools of thought for that, but me personally, I like singing drums because it's better to have and be able to take away than have something that can never do it in the first place. And I know I sound like a broken record when I say that, but I can't stress it enough. It's so important because, you know, being able to, if you spend, you know, $3,000 on a drum set, but no matter what you do to the drum set, it's always going to sound like something with re-rings or, you know, like Pearl does that with re-rings or um, DW, that kind of stuff where it's just going to have that low, fat, boom, 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 rock fundamental to it. That's cool for, for a lot of genres, but you can get the same thing out of drums that sing. Um, like my Mapex, I love it for that reason because... I can get the drums to boom, 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 sing as long as I want, or just get rid of it and then turn them into a, you know, like a, a birch shelled sound. So that's what I really like about these uh, maple walnut, um, is that you can get the best of both worlds where you're getting that midline of what maple kind of produces, plus the attack and punch of what walnut gives, um, but with birch, you know, it's got a quicker fundamental and just kind of that boom, boom, boom. Um, where with this, now I can kind of get the sound dialed in as I want with different moon gels, different O-rings, head combos like I just said. Um, so I'm a fan of having 
within my toms. Uh, flange tubes, I usually go for thicker ones like 2.6 mil rather than you know 1.3 or the cheaper ones like that come on uh, cheaper kits or um, you know and they do give some more resonance so there are some reasons for wanting 1.3 uh, millimeter but I'm more of a fan of 2.6 they're beefier they're halfway in between kind of, of a die cast and a really light um, flanged um, but this is the best of both worlds because now I can swap out with triple flange with die cast um, do a combo of die cast on top and bottom, flange on top, die cast on bottom, die cast on top, flange on bottom. They, you get my idea. But what I wanted to show you is that, um, well, I'll give you some, I, and I haven't tuned this, uh, I literally just got it from the shop and just uh, went through quickly and just kind of got an idea for what lugs were lowest and what I needed to fix up. But this is just basically how it sounds, just like right out of the shop and sitting on the shelf for however long. Actually, he said he's only got had it for two days, so I got in there right at the perfect time, and when I looked them all up, and I was like, you want a hundred bucks for this? He's like, yeah, it just it's used, and um, we haven't been able to, you know, no one else has shown interest in it yet, and I'm surprised it hasn't sold yet, but if you want to take it, um, I'll give you 20% off on it, so that's what I got. But uh, without the snares off, You know? Nice deep fundamental to it. The throw off on it is killer. It is, there's like zero dust in here. They must have really taken great care of this drum because there's no gunk in here. There's no, um, you know how when they, sometimes they'll lube it and then the lube will get the gunk stuck in there and stuff. But instead of it being, you know, um, a horizontal pushing away or towards you, now you're going out from the drum and in from the drum, kind of like the mag throw off on a, on a DW, but really strong nylon straps. Um, it's got a really, really strong butt plate. So the butt plate is bulletproof. As you can see that not only are they stylish, but they're made really solid and really well and these lugs are extra thick lugs, zero splay at all, um, in addition to the die cast tube. So because this is eight lugs, my other snare is eight lugs, they're both 13s. Now it's like killing two birds with one stone. So not, now not only do I have a birch snare, because um, I took the other birch I had, it was a pearl SST, that uh, silver sparkle one I had, I took that to the academy so that students could play on it. But this is actually like a good, a good birch drum. And, um, you know, I'll get the sound out of it that I want in the, you know, kind of going more for a deeper rock sound with this one. Um, but now with the snares engaged. Kind of pretty ferocious ring right now, like I said, it's not in tune, but yeah, way out of tune. But just showing that this drum is going to be an awesome drum. Um, the manufacturing of it with the quality of the hoops, it's a heavy drum, too. Um, and the shell is just immaculate, immaculate. Like, I, I don't even see a seam. This might be a solid shell. Oh no, there's the seam. There's, the, well, no. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, that's not the seam. That's just the, um, that's just the grain of the drum. I'm honestly not seeing a shell, or I mean a seam. And I usually, you know, that's, those are easy to usually, usually pick out either a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal seam in these. And I'm not seeing any seam at all. Plus, the inside of the drum is finished like properly with a good polyurethane coating, and the bearing edges are rock solid. 
really good bearing edges. Plus then the StarCast tube. So anyway, there's this one. Got this, great throw off. I know it's gonna sound great. Um, this, I mean, just moves like a glove. This thing is so, the strainer is so easy to operate. Um, the throw off so easy to operate. And I know once I work on this drum a little bit and swap out this, uh, it has a uh, Evans Hazy 300 on it, but you can sell, tell the person kind of shifted the bottom head over time because the snares used to run like this way. You can see the little uh, indents in them and then they sw switch it this way. So, you know, once I do a little bit of work on it, this is going to be a fantastic snare and I think it's going to look great uh, with the Mapex with the, uh, you know, the dark, dark chrome on it. And then it has kind of that brushed, like black um, look to it. But it's a classy drum and it sounds great because, um, okay, so now what I'm going to show you my second purchase. I just got my Dream 15s. Brian, you're going to be stoked about this, buddy. I got my K-Suite 15s. Literally the last pair in stock um, of all of inventory of what I was searching. And then where do I look to see where they're in stock at? But right up the road from me in Murrieta. So... I just booked it there as quick as I could. List price for each one of these hats is like 220 bucks. And my friend is a manager there, Steve. Shout out to Steve. If anybody's in SoCal or near this place called Murrieta in kind of south of Riverside, in between like um, San Diego and Riverside, man, I got $80 off of these hats. So $40 off of each hat. I ended up spending like 360 or something for these hats, even though they would have been like 440 um, out the door, and they're brand new. So um, I have 13 inch hats, I have 14 inch hats. I've got the Peisty Dark Crisps, I've got K Custom um, Darks, and then I've got my um, Mel Lewis. Um, the Istanbul AGOP Mel Lewis 13s. So, um, you know, 13s are covered, 14s are covered. I have two different pairs of 14s, and I've been wanting 15 inch hats for a while, but these things sound like butter, just like unbelievably. They have the um, unfinished bell, unlaid bell, um, which can get a little bit bright and abrasive. Just the sound of these hats is, is so great because I love my Peisty Dark Crisp, but they're like really bright and loud and rock rocking kind of symbols. These are a little bit more mellow. They sit right in between the Peisty Dark Crisps, which are like loud, abrasive rock kind of more hats, uh, funk groove kind of that kind of stuff too. But um, the, the K Custom um, Darks are really dark you know and they're 14 and I love those too but you know just depending on the context and the mix and all that but these literally sit right in between the Pisces um, and the K customs so anyway without further ado let's see how these sound They can get pretty loud and cutting too, but they have this good dark tone to where it doesn't get away from you, you know, but it still cuts, but it doesn't give you this abrasive like, you know, 
kind of like the bell does, but in the bell it works in context well too. foot pea soup stuff. So you get the idea, but yeah, man, these sound great. Just like they're so musical, you know. And I went for the 15s over the 14s, just because I have plenty of other 14s, and the 14s are quite a bit, quite a bit brighter not nearly as dark as the 15s um and i wanted you know i've been looking for 15s for a while i was going to get um, some minor um dark um medium i don't know the exact model but they, they were darks uh, minor 15 inch darks um but after doing you know more research and listening to them and doing a to b comparisons and all that kind of stuff man these k suites are sweet so um thanks to brian for you know because he's he really likes his uh regular k line and k suites and he plays with a whole k suite setup which are really cool um and just as my tastes have changed you know i'm i, I almost bought new beats again <laughs> so because i uh i sold my new beats to be able to get this mapex and all that plus i've been playing with them for so long it was just time for a new sound you know i've been playing with those for so long I just wanted something new. Um, 
So, and my Peisty Dark Chris pretty much took over for that. Um, because they have a very similar timbre, but even better, in, in my opinion. And now these are like buttery, you know, kind of like the new beats are. Um, but these are really buttery, really buttery. And have the new beat sound in them, but an even darker, um, more musical tone to my ear. Um, just because these are kind of lighter hats, they're not nearly as heavy as like the Peisty Dark Chris has a really heavy bottom and a light top. And these are more of a light top with just a little bit heavier of a bottom, but not by a whole lot. So it gives that just good, good, you know, because the Peisty Dark Chris are kind of sound trashy, uh, not in a bad way, but like a trashy open sound, you know, like... play with touch I'm a big believer in touch you can always play harder single strokes and playing your power strokes you're gonna get tired that way you'll injure yourself that way but to each their own um, and for me you know I'm much more about touch because touch takes way longer to get in and way longer to train your muscle memory to play good and with touch than it does just to You can always play harder, you can always, you know, we use this type of power stroke and improper technique, unless you mean to do it, and you're playing that for, you know, crescendos or the dynamics of the song matches, then sure. Um, but if you're playing every pattern you play like that, then, you know, you're not going to get the most out of pulling the sound out of your instrument because you gotta know how to kind of use them, the tension you're putting with your foot, um, how much of a slosh you want, whether you're using tip, whether you're using the shaft. You know, that kind of thing. So touch for me is, is a much more important aspect of it. Um, and if you know how to play with touch with these, in addition to how much pressure you're putting down, um, you can get so many different tones and musical applications out of these hats. So, anyway, guys, got the U snare, and these are brand new. So I got the hats brand new, but for significantly off what they it's like almost a hundred bucks off of of what they would have been uh, if I had just paid retail for them. So, thanks, Steve at Guitar Center. You always looking out for me, bro, because I, I buy so much stuff from those guys, and I send students there. I, and I always send him to Steve so that he gets the commission for stuff. So he's always willing to help me out, you know. So thanks, Steve. Really appreciate you, bro, because uh, I was able to get that snare and the hi-hats today where I was thinking, well, I'll just be only be able to get the hi-hats. Or um, I wanted to get a ride in addition, but, you know, I'm going to wait till next month for that because um, I'm looking at a couple different ones. And um, I'd rather just go for a pristine used condition one then go for a new new one um that's you know two to three hundred dollars more for the same exact symbol so that's kind of my philosophy but that's why i play with mi mi mix match stuff too um because i almost got the peisty 2002 sound edge 14 inch hats but they're b12 and they're really really bright they're they're really bright really 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 bright yeah if you're playing rock um, sure, cool, um, and don't get me wrong, I like the, you know, they're the first ones that came out with the Sound Edge, Zildjian copied those with their master sounds, all that kind of stuff, I like them, um, and they're cheaper too, they're only $200 versus like, you know, $450, uh, for hats, but in my opinion, when I compared all these, because I put them all on stands, and them next to each other, I did 14s, 13s, uh, I even did the K hybrids, which are 13.25s and 14.25s, uh, um, you know, and compared all of them. And the Pisces were, like, abrasive, you know. They, they're cool. You kind of got to get used to them. But New Beats and the, and the um, Pisces remind me too much of them for me to justify spending more on just more bright hats 
um, where I can get the same bright sounds out of combining the hats I already have or just using the Pisces to their full, um, that I already have to their full advantage. So for me, I'm a huge K fan. I wanted to get some K Con, uh, K Constantinople's. My next one on the list, I love the bounce ride, the K Con bounce. God, that is an amazing symbol, a jazz symbol. Um, but it's just the sound and, and tone and the way it sings, it's like, glass it just sounds like glass um so the k-con um bounce and then the k-con renaissance so those are the those are my two like if i could get two ride symbols right now that would be it so the renaissance both in k-con stand so um you know k-cons are some of the best symbols out there by far um especially in the jazz context or um kind of like to sit a little bit lower and darker in the mix but I like the Renaissances personally. Um, Russell just, he had someone play on his bounce ride a couple months ago. And the guy broke it right next to the bell. He borrowed it from Russell and then broke it, you know? So it was like he cracked the cymbal after he had only had it for two months. And those cymbals were like close to $900 when they first came out. They've gone down to about 560 dollars now. Um, but anyway, he just got another one. Um, so I've gotten to play on his, hear his, fantastic ride. Um, but the Renaissance has a little bit more versatility to it in my opinion. So I think the Renaissance is what I'm gonna get next. Um, because I love Pisces 2002s, don't get me wrong, but they are very bright. They're B12, um, B10s and B12s most of the time with their price proprietary alloys um, and which is great for brighter stuff and if you're playing a lot of rock and stuff but if you're getting Pisces 2002 is just to have a match set I guarantee you that in within that match set you're gonna find some you don't like because they're really bright they're really bright um, especially with the 14 inch sound edge which is cool for some things if you wanted to cut through rock if you're trying to cut through a wall of amps, that kind of thing, sure. Um, but for sitting in the mix, especially being recorded, the darker the better. Because you're not going to get... What will happen is too much wash will happen, and then you'll have your cymbals ringing out, and with that bright, like, harsh overtone sound, almost like a... And that's just hitting the bell on a hi-hat, you know what I mean? So if you hit those B10, B12s um, in the right place and in the right dynamics, they will wash out the rest of the sound of your drums, at least in my experience. So, and I know it has to do with touch, I know it has to do with all of that, but the sound edge, Pisces, dark, or Pisces um, sound edge um, are quite bright. But the dark crisps I love, um, you know, in their signature lines, once you get up into their B20s, uh, their higher proprietary alloys, the artist seri artisan series, all those things, um, they those sound great. So I'm not knocking Peisty by any means. I absolutely loved my uh, Peisty 2002 22 inch ride, but because it's a big symbol and um, it kind of controls the overtones a little bit uh, better than the uh, sound edge hats do that you know those make great rides but they're still very bright so instead of going with that I just went ahead and said okay I'm not going to get the ride for today plus I didn't have enough money to afford everything but I'm so happy I got these hats because man if you read reviews about these hats online they're one of the highest acclaimed 15 inch hats you can possibly find people even say they're trading in their thins and they're medium thins and their minels and their K customs and their regular K's and, and this and that to get this exact pair because they've played all of the above, Pisces and 602's and 2002's and regular K's, K customs, Pisces, um, Pisces signatures, uh, you know, sound edge, all those different things and people keep coming back to these. So I think they're going to sit great in the mix.
just play a quick little groove to end it, but... sloppy there but we we're trying to do the flick up instead of and the pea soups on it are so great or even like a little calypso giving you an example of playing some pea soup stuff in there but i'm so stoked on these guys really great hats and um you can tell that they go through painstaking you know process for the lathing um and hammering part of it and then leaving you know i'm not quite sure why they leave this um unfinished but um you know it just it, i'm sure it adds to the sonic characteristics of it but it just uh it can kind of get away from you if you're not too careful you know So you guys get the idea, but I just wanted to show because um, I know Brian's going to be stoked. Um, I think he has the 14s, um, but dude, good call, man. I've li I listened to a lot of your suites, and I think even out over your master sounds, Brian, um, I think I like uh, the suites the better. Um, they just have, you, you, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. They have that exact like buttery sweet wash to them it doesn't get abrasive um and you know it, depending on how well you know how to control them you can get really good articulate stick definition chick pea soups uh playing off the bell um you know using different dynamics and all that and they will make great groove hats great groove hat even for jazz and stuff you know like it, for jazz and boom chick stuff um, they'll work great for that, but as far as like R&B, funk, hip hop, that kind of stuff, these are fantastic groove symbol or hat, groove hi hats. So, stoke guys. So yeah, I just got my Peisty 20, the Fast Crash, um, playing usually with the Minel Tradition Jazz series, um, and then I got a B12 up here. Like, see, that's what I don't mind with B12s is that. In a crash, like, yeah, you want some brightness and a little bit of uh, maybe a little extra sustain and that kind of stuff. But, you know, when it comes to something that you need to sit well in the mix, especially if you're recording with, um, that's why I don't mind using mismatched cymbals or brands or whatever because I'm going purely off of uh, the sonic abilities of it and how it's going to sit in the mix and then that way I have um, options for, okay, am I playing rock with Jay? Do I need something bright? Okay, well then let me get the Peisty Signature Dark Crisps out. Okay, am I playing something a little bit darker and quicker hats? Okay, then let me get the Istanbul Mel Lewis 13s out. Um, you know, am I playing something that's like quite dark? Um, then I'm going to pull these out. You know, um, cause these have, these are really musical hats as well, but they're, they're very dark. They have, you know, quite a dark sound, quite a dark sound to them. So, you know, I just pair different, um, hats depending on, and then here's my, my China boy with the hole cut out of it. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually just going to create a stack out of this. So either use it, um, by itself or use it and then put a uh, splash upside down in it 
or maybe even uh, one of my hi-hat symbols that I don't care as much about. And then last not least, I've got my Supernaturals, straight from Turkey, everything about it, handmade, in Turkey, from Blanks, it's got raw belt, it's got these inner lathings, um, you know, it's got a good hammer pattern, um, in addition to the raw bell and the lathing. Um, and these are painstakingly made in Turkey. So it's one guy. And he goes out to Turkey once a year and makes these symbols. And Russell happened to be um, sponsored by Supernaturals with the A deal. So they just gave him like some killer symbols. And this is the Divine series. You can It's worn off there, but... This is the 22-inch Supernaturals Divine. Fantastic symbol. So, um, you know how we all are, little symbol or drum geeks and whatnot. Um, but for me, it's not just about having it. It's so that I can use it depending on the context. Um, you know, and whether I'm playing more uh, gospel or funk or jazz or latin or you know just depending on the context then that way at least i have options for my mix um and kind of get a different flavor for depending on what i'm playing or recording so all right guys long video but wanted to give some sound profiles and just show the new hats i'm so so excited about those hats and you can t they're just pristine condition and then this snare drum in addition to that just what a pretty snare drum and with great lugs and die cast and man did someone take great care of this drum really good care i can't i mean i can't believe it's a couple decades old i'm like what um and then last but not least i needed one more um microphone for just a floor tom and i was thinking too maybe i'll use this on uh use this on my hi-hat because right now i have a side address um, and people kind of, I don't know if you've seen this, but these are called PGAs. These microphones are called, uh, PGA Atlas, and it's just a side address, so it only comes out from this side in a cardioid pattern. So, it's not an omni and picking up sound from the back of it, it's only picking up sound directly down in front of it. So, it actually makes a, a great, um, hat mic, because it's pointed right down on top of it, it's capturing all of the frequencies that are coming out the other side of it with all my open closed pea soup type stuff um but then this microphone is just a sm57 knockoff and made by stag um but i just got it because you know if it's not like a kick mic or a snare mic or something that's really crucial to getting really really good sound um then I'll just go ahead and get these no problem. Because it literally is an SM57 knockoff. So, and this is actually the Stag Professional Series. I don't know, whenever I think of Stag, I think of like low quality stuff. But it actually came in a great case. Came with a cable. Um, and then it even says, you know, right on it. SM57 style mic, uh, low input with low Z, so it's not going to have a lot of distortion and rumble through the cable, um, and instrument or vocal mic, and 40 bucks, plus I got, um, I think it was either 10 or 15 dollars off of this, so it, it's just kind of like jumping when the price is right, or when the time is right, but I was able to pick up my very last one that I need because I have mics for every single tom except for my lowest. I usually just put one like here, you know, that's capturing a cardioid pattern of both toms. But now I can mount one on each um, and um, have my whole microphone array to where I'm not going to have to double up on mics. Plus then using this as my birch snare for fat rock sounds and then those... Um, K sweets. So thanks again, Brian, man. You really helped me out figuring out which kind of wins I wanted to get. And then when I settled on, okay, I need some 15s now. I've got 13s. I got 14s. 
and what do I think would fit right in between the sound profiles of my 13s, my um, dark crisps, and then my custom dark, you know, which are really dark, the K custom dark, um, like I just said, which are, are quite dark. So even though these are 15 and should be a little bit darker, these are actually uh, brighter and louder and have a stronger chick sound to them than the um, darks do, than the K-Custom darks do. So, stoked guys, really happy. Thanks for all your help. I know, 40 minute long video, but I do these sometimes just to share the knowledge and kind of give ideas. If people might be searching for stuff that they're interested in or, you know, like thinking about certain hats or do they like this brand or that, I don't know, sometimes it helps. And just trying to show that like, you don't have to break the bank to to get different sounds. And my whole thing is like, oh, I just, I'm not trying to get more drums. You know, I don't need more drums, right? I've got this, I got this 14 by five. I got this awesome DW. I love this kit. This kit sounds amazing for how small it is. Then this kit, and then I've got my big black brass which is another pork pie, um, but that's a 14 by six and a half. Then I've got now this one, which is a 13 by six. And then I've got the brass patina, which is a 13 by seven. So, you know, that's that's my point, is trying to ranges um, and getting the sound of depending on, you know, because your snare um, snare and hats and bass drum are pretty much your main voices, right? And we are much more cymbal players than we are drum players, right? We play a lot more cymbals than we're playing drum notes most of the time. Um, so that's just my philosophy, but, uh, you know, teach their own and, uh, maybe this is informative for other people and, uh, I'm stoked. So once I get this stuff set up and get that, um, snare tuned up, but this snare is going to be super cool. Especially for a hundred bucks. I mean, a hundred bucks for this quality of a snare? Unbelievable. And like, even, you know, even the little brushing looks cool in it. Even though it's just, you know, not like a lacquered, you know, exotic finish like kind of this is. But I think still think it looks awesome. And then put behind this Mapex kit, with it being black with black hardware, I think it'll look great. It'll look great. So, all right, guys, love you. It's doing well, and uh, thanks for putting up with this long video. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you on the next one. Happy drumming.